Hello, welcome artist. I hope you're thinking of yourself as an artist these days because you definitely are. Today is Thursday, May 21st, 2020, and we are on our 19th day of sketching together. I can't believe how fast the time is going. So welcome back. Today, we are going to be drawing something we fear. So we're working with prompt never, number 12. But I wanted to go back to yesterday's prompt. We were working with the word freedom. And I wonder what word you worked with or what, what images you worked with. What, what was prompted by the word freedom for you? What ideas and ideals uh, were prompted? What, it, what do you think that freedom is? What does it mean to you? And what came through in your image? Yesterday I talked about Maya Lin and uh, her winning design of the Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial. And so I wanted to show you that. Um, yesterday I drew it upside down. I drew it this way and realized it doesn't come to a point in the middle. It um, starts further out and so I turned it upside down. And so the memorial starts very, very small and goes in. Actually it would start over here, work its way over to the middle and then it comes back out again. So it really uh, goes into the earth. Remember yesterday I talked about her thinking of it as a scar in our uh, culture, in our humanity, in our lives, in our way of being, and in the loss of all of those lives, um, both here in America and then, of course, in Vietnam as well. So uh, this was just my idea that sacrifice uh, comes with freedom. Freedom comes at a cost for all of us. And I wanted to tell you, I've never been to Washington, D.C., and I know many of you probably have. You've probably even been to the wall and had, have had that opportunity and that experience. And that's something that I would really love to do one day. But there was a traveling wall that an artist had put together a number of years ago, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years, probably 15 years ago. And it traveled around the United States and it made its way to universities. And I went to visit my grandparents in Keeler, Wisconsin, and I was passing through Platteville and I had, oh, I had just stopped at my mom's and her husband, um, my stepdad, had shown me an article that he had taken out of the newspaper, and it was on the Vietnam Wall and this traveling wall, and that it was at Platteville for the rest of the weekend. It had been there for a week or so. And so on my way back home to Madison, I stopped at this replica of the wall, and it was amazing. I um, read name after name after name, looking at day after day after day, and I wrote down some of those names, those names that really touched my heart. And most of them were uh, the boys who um, showed up the first day in Vietnam and died the first day in Vietnam. And I wanted to know more about them and their life. So I went home and looked them up. So it was an incredible experience, um, very solemn and very sad, and yet a very... Um, very appreciative from you know me that it was this opportunity that I didn't have to travel to Washington DC that I could see <clears throat> a replica of it and experience it in a different way in a place that was home to me so that is my idea of freedom okay so today we're working with the idea of fear what do you fear <clears throat> you might have big fears you might have little fears you might have no fear at all I think of myself as pretty fearless. There are a few fears that I have, but my biggest fear of all, and if you ever hear me screaming at Oakwood, you can bet that this is the case, that I probably saw a mouse. I am terrified of mouse. I grew up on a farm, and in our barn, there would have been lots of mice, lots of mice in the hay mile, lots of mice in the grain room, and I think that's probably what triggers my fear of mice, opening up the grain room door to get out the grain for the cows to eat, and there were 20 mice scattering every in every direction. So mice are very sweet, very cute, and yet my biggest fear. So I cannot deal with mice. So I'm gonna draw a big mouse today. So I'm working right here, working cl close so you can see. I pulled up a cute image of a mouse on my computer. I'm gonna try to recreate that because they are so cute. And I'm gonna make this mouse so big because my fear this mouse could be 10 feet tall for as big as how big my fear is of mice. Some people love mice. My daughter, Zoe, she wants to get a mouse and she just doesn't understand 
that with the mother she has, she will never ever have a mouse living in our home. When we moved into our home out in the woods here, um, the house was overrun by mice. So my husband spent a good year doing a catch and release program for all the mice that came in our house. And we soon found that the mice were very quickly multiplying. Sometimes I'd even catch a mouse and I'd take it down the road and drop it off alive, knowing only it probably made its way back to our house to scare me the next day. So finally, finally, we have rid our house for many years now of mice and I am so excited, but that doesn't mean I still don't fear them because if I saw one outside, I would be just as terrified. So now we have a few cats outside and a few kittens who are taking care of the mice, we hope anyways. So what makes mice so adorable is their great big eyes. So I'm going to even exaggerate these even more because I want this mouse to look really sympathetic so that instead of being fearful, he seems so cute and innocent but I know their plans. And it's to take over my life and my comfort level and ultimately my fear. So this is the beginning of my mouse. My proportions are way off. I can see that already, but uh, it's the beginning of my mouse. I'm gonna make those eyes really, really deep and black. I'm gonna add lots of details. And today, um, most days when I'm working, I don't try for realism. I'm gonna go back into this and I wanna really make this as realistic as possible. I'm gonna use lines and shading and value to really get that fur to look as real as possible, to make these eyes look as real as possible, to get the light reflecting in them. And a good, good way to get light reflected is just to leave white spots, leave those Leave those spots blank in an eye, and that helps you start looking at the reflective because in all of our eyes, we have that light reflected. And if we looked really closely, if we could zoom in, we would see the image, of course, reflected in, in that light in our eye. And so I don't know what this mouse is looking at, probably me here. He's probably just as scared of me as I am of him, but I don't quite believe that that's true because I'm pretty terrified of him and I'm not going to hurt him. I'm only going to scream and run away. So that might seem like a really silly fear. Some of you also might have fear, fears of different animals. Maybe it's bats. Maybe it's spiders. Maybe it is snakes or maybe other creatures. Sometimes people are scared of dogs. Whatever your fear is, it is valid. Believe me, I know that no matter what that fear is or how silly it seems, your fear is valid to you, right? That it <clears throat> helps protect you. It seems sometimes nonsensical, but somewhere along the lines, you developed that fear. Sometimes our fears are much bigger fears of losing people, of, of death, of the unknown, of when will this time of being locked inside our homes ever end. Those are, those are really big fears. And maybe you're very resilient and you don't have many fears at all. Or maybe like me, your fears are manageable as long as this little critter doesn't come crawling along. So today I wanted to make that, that mouse bigger than life. I'm actually going to go back into my sketchbook this time and I am going to recreate that because I might be able to work on finer detail if I'm working a little bit smaller. And I'm going to go back into this guy and see what I can do to do with him to make him a little more a little more cute and a little more fearful in my eyes. Okay? 
Uh, let me know what your fear is and what you're working on. Let me know what's happening in your sketchbooks and what you need. If you need anything at all, let me know. You can reach me at jennifer.bethel at oakwoodvillage.net. And of course, give me a call 230-4324. I'm having some problems with my uh, computer these days. The sound isn't working. So my response time to getting to my messages is a little delayed. Normally my phone uh, messages come right straight to my computer, but the sound doesn't work. So even though I can play them, there is no sound. So I will get to your messages as soon as possible. And again, if you feel comfortable, send me a photo. I would love to see what you're working on or catch me at the front desk. I'm there on Sunday for sure from noon to eight. So bring your sketchbook by and sh take a minute and show me what you've been working on. I'd love to know, okay? Have a great day. I'll see you back tomorrow, Friday. Enjoy this beautiful weather that we've been waiting for for so long and happy art making.